I'm Billy Squire. I'd like to wish you all a happy holiday season and a terrific new year. Christmas is a time to say I love you And I fear that will last all through the Christmas from the Paul and Tom Show. Where's that money, you silly, stupid old fool? Where's that money? Uh. Do you realize what this means? Uh. It means bankruptcy and scandal and prison. That's what it means. One of us is going to jail. Well, it's not going to be me. I guess I'm going to have to say that I would be okay with that. You know, oh, you're so mean. Oh, what a meanie. You say such mean things. Hello, darling. Hello, Daddy. Why she keep playing that? This is one self-absorbed guy. I have to practice it for the party tonight, Daddy. I don't know why we don't all have pneumonia. Drafty old barn up the place. Might as well be living in a refrigerator. George, what's wrong? Wrong everything, Troy. You call this a happy family. Why do we have to have all these kids? That you're cavalierly comparing <laughs> your daughter to something else that comes out of another part of your body. Dad, how do you spell hallelujah? How should I know? What do you think I am, a dictionary? Well, I'm just saying, like, you know, you, it's, it's organic. You made it. It's flesh and blood. Uh, it's something from your loins. Much, <laughs> much like that bean burrito from last night. Like, Tommy, stop that. Stop it. Janie, haven't you learned that silly tune yet? You play it over and over again. Now, tell me to stop. Stop it. Stop it. Anything that you produce out of your body, I think people are repulsed by, whether it's your boogers or anything else. You know, and your kids happen to be something that you produced. (laughs) The Paul and Tom Show. Paul Poteet and Tom Davis. Do you hear that rustling? (laughs) What are you? Who are you? Rush Limbaugh imitating the late Larry Lujak. Now, why are you rustling paper, little Tommy? That, that that is that is little Tommy. That's my son grabbing the microphone. <laughs> this is our tribute to Larry Lujak. Then the littlest Tommy, ladies and gentlemen. Does he have any animal stories for us? I am uh, sitting here with uh, with one, a boy on on my left leg and a girl on my right leg. Well, Michael Jackson, tell us about your new album. Oh, th- this is my right leg. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> My white leg. Uh, and there he is. That's, that's oh, is that? number four right there. Right. Wow, he's right. talking that much? Right left. Uh, yeah, and that's Elizabeth. Left. And yes, every, everyone left. is talking right. all the time. Paul. Right left. I, right. I'm on the radio, right. and I talk right. the least right. amount right. in this right. house. <laughs> I can't tell. Nothing personal, littlest Tommy, but I can't tell everybody apart. <laughs> It's well, like when I listen he, to the chicks on the right. <laughs> he's, uh, I don't know who's talking. She's four and he's two. He, he's got a little bit of a, he's got that soft sound, just like daddy. He's got that soft sounding. That effeminate. Effeminate voice. voice. <laughs> they have to put 50,000 watts of compression on it on WLW to make you sound like a man. <laughs> So anyway, mommy was uh, supposed to be back by four o'clock, <laughs> so we could, so we could record. But uh, I figure, what the heck? Why don't we wing it? We'll see. Let's just see what happens. It's no wonder we never do this damn thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've never been so busy doing nothing in my life. <laughs> well, tell me about it, Seinfeld. But really, I just would. I've heard you talk a million times. I'd like to hear uh, little Tommy talk even more. That was pretty entertaining, uh, brother. You want to say hi? Go ahead. Say hi. Hey, Tommy. It's Paul. Your real father. 
Hi, Go Tommy. Ahead. You got your headphones on, buddy? He does. Uh, Go ahead. You know what that'll lead to? Someday you'll be on the radio, Tommy. Say or hi, not. Paul. Someday. Hi, Paul. Oh, I talked over you, Tommy. Say it again. Say hi, Paul. Oh. Hi, Paul. <laughs> close enough. I've had anchors, you know, farther away than that, so that's cool. Get up real close. Hi, Paul. What toys are you going to get for Christmas, Tommy? What do you want for Christmas? Um, um, don't do it in my Mark Tank gang. Don't do it in Mark Tank Thomas uh, the third, we're missing some consonants or something here. Some, some, some. That was, that was a dump truck and a monster truck. Oh, a dump truck and a monster truck. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now Elizabeth wants to say something. Say hi, Paul. Hey, Elizabeth. How are you? It's Paul. All right. There you go. Okay. All right. Say hi. Hey, Elizabeth. It's Paul, Daddy's friend. How are you? Hi, Paul. Wait a minute. I'm here with Santa. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, Elizabeth. How are you? <laughs> now wow, back right, to Paul. Up. What's that? Santa Claus? Uh-huh. What, well, now's your chance. Tell Santa what you want. Uh, Santa Claus? Oh, I've got those. Uh, I want a portrait. It's a, 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 a dirt bike. <laughs> dirt bike? <laughs> Well, Santa thinks maybe that's a little unsafe. Uh-oh. What'd he say? That was a little safe. It was not safe? Well, it, why don't you ask him for some of that jewelry you were talking about? Uh, no, it was safe. Oh, I see. Well, as long as your daddy is there with you, it will be safe. Do you hear that? Well, my daddy with you, I'll be safe. Oh, oh, that's good. Well, always <laughs> listen to your parents. Headphones there. Oh, okay. So anyway, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 busy around here. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, there's a certain layer of uh, distract. Okay. <laughs> Ironically, I was about to say distractions. <laughs> there's a certain layer of of distractions and extra time and effort that we, that we've noticed that we don't have anymore at Christmas time. And it's both good and it's also kind of sad. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this is, uh, it's, it's definitely a, a different chapter in my life. Tommy, they fit a board. Play, play beat, Tommy. I don't care. All right, sis. Tommy Don't Care, which is the name of, uh, isn't that the name of your new single that drops Tuesday? Hi, Tommy Joy. Okay. All right. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Hi, Tommy Joy. <laughs> say say bye-bye. Bye-bye, poop. Bye. Well, <laughs> what well I could be on one of my regular morning shows if she's going to do the poop jokes. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the, uh, the, the trigger word these days. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so this is... Elementary school radio. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's been an interesting, I think I hear the back door, by the way. Either that's my wife or my son is escaping. <laughs> Try again. It's, you may find it's, it's hard to lose them at some point. Oh, she's here. Oh, <laughs> mommy's here. Oh, mommy's home. Good. Mommy's home. Uh, so that's anyway. because I'm done with her, Tom. Santa. <laughs> it's a terrible Santa. Santa, please. You know, now, first of all, how many Santas have we run into in the last week? There was a Santa at Home Depot. There was a Santa at uh, Frisch's Big Boy. There was, a, there was a Santa at Do It Best Hardware. I go to a lot of hardware stores. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of uh, what kind of a Christmas? This is uh, the helpful hardware man Christmas that you're that you're putting together, or what? Well, I've been doing all kinds of work around the house. Six months. <laughs> oh, Paul. Six to eight months ago, I decided I would take off my my original back door off, off the house. And not, not a metaphor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I decided I would peel off my back door and be more open. Sure. To, uh, transparent. Yeah, transparent. Yeah. So 
uh, my wife says, you realize that you've got to get that done fairly soon because it's going to start getting cold. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah. I know. Should we, should we start talking weather? I know you zoned out. Yeah. And I was, you know, I just say, hey, no, look, I, I'm a man. I'm a man's man. I have seven different hammers. I, you know, I have seven different kinds of hammers. I, I'm, I don't need advice on home improvement from a woman. From <laughs> a chick. You know, on the right or left. So <laughs> here, I guess that would be the best, right? A chick on the right and the left. <laughs> right? Middle, right? Right? So, Don't sully our Christmas episode I'm with sorry, this kind of sorry, talk. Very, my, my wife's telling me, she's giving me this lecture about, you know, she, she doesn't want this to become a quote unquote Tommy project, um, which I still don't even know what that means. But OK, sure. And it, it made me mad. Nevertheless. Well, anyway, Paul, fast forward six months. Door still not done. And, you know, it's <laughs> literally snowing. Like, the biggest snow we've had in six years <laughs> is, is just pounding down. Followed by, of course, flooding rains a week or so later. Well, you know, first of all, I don't know if you've ever tried this before, but, like, I, I dare you to find an old house. Just don't even ask. Just walk up and start unbolting the door. All we have to do is live here another 20 or 30 years. I think we're there. And, and you know, you've got... On these old houses, you got somewhere like 20 years after the, like someone built a house, they got sick of looking at the varnish, that dark color that just naturally turns darker, whatever, shellac. Whatever shellac, you right, right, right. Well, and then they just get out the paintbrush and they start painting. And, you know, it's, let's just pretend to see this house is built in 20. So let's say it's 30 years later. It's 1950. She's got a fresh brew of lead paint. <laughs> <She's> just, <laughs> do, do. And the best way to, 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 to handle a deformity, as we all learned in the Rankin-Bass Stop Action Classic, is to just cover up that shiny red nose. Ah, oh, that a boy. Yeah, see? Yeah, the does like it. Well, here's the thing. I mean, first of all, I mean, what? It, Donner was the best parent he could be for his time. I okay, mean, he, he didn't just, know. He did know. He, yeah, he was just trying to help his son fit in. I don't honestly, I still, still don't see anything wrong with it. But so, I, I'm working on this door, and I'm working, and I'm buying sanders, and I'm buying different types of sanders, small sanders, little sanders, big sanders, Dremels, <laughs> like. I don't know. This door, you know, I could have bought a door for probably $200 or something. Well, I was just going to restore the door, save some money, and keep the original hardware. You know, it's, it's a restoration thing. It's this, you know, it's all about keeping the house original. Well, $350, $400 in sandpaper and gadgets later. All right. The, the door is coming along. I've got it down to the bare wood. And I, I'm looking at it, I'm, and I'm so proud of myself that, you know, I've got this far. Of course, again, snow on the ground. <laughs> you know, we have a screen door, and there's snow on the ground. This was the longest stripping project since, you know, Madonna took off the stuff last night. She's getting older. It's a little slower than it used to be. Well, you know, it happens. But a little of that insure, and it helps your joints. It helps. By the way, did you see that study that multivitamins don't do anything? I'll get back to that. But, <laughs> Still to come. But so anyhow, I'm, I'm, I'm in the final stages of getting the door done and I decided to get brave and pull the trim out and get the, you know, hundred year old paper thin piece of glass out. You know, I'm doing all this work in the basement. I walk it up to the kitchen and I'm scraping the old paint off of the corners and then I'm going to take some steel wool and scrub on it. And, and you know, this when I'm when I'm done, this piece of glass will look like it is April 15th, 1920. Again, you know, this is going to be a wonderful piece of restored working nostalgia, as I call it. OK. Kind of like it my career. Been, so, right. Exactly. So I'm scrubbing along and scrubbing along. It's like, it just shatters my hands. <laughs> Once had a window and it was a blast. Soon turned out had a hand of glass. It's it's laying it. You know, this was in the kitchen sink. When I was trying to scrub it, and you know, it's it's laying everywhere. Oh well, I've done it this time. All right, fine. I'll go get a new piece of glass. It's probably more UV protection or something. Who knows? Whatever. I go to the hardware. First, I go downstairs. I measure it out with my tape measure. I have three tape measures. I'm a man. 
And I, I go to the hardware store, get this piece of glass cut, and I, I'm really worried about the width. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I don't know if it's just going to slide in there the, the way the old one did. And Paul, I'll, I'll be darned. It just, when I got the new piece of glass in, it just so easily fit down inside the hole, you know, width wise. Then I realized that I had measured wrong and somehow. The glass is six inches too short, <laughs> <laughs> which is usually the opposite from the mistake you make <laughs> yeah, exactly. with the tape measure. Sure. Well, I mean, just about anybody will take an extra six inches. Trust me. You know, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Christmas. So uh, I, I, I go what I, I go. That piece of glass was like 20 bucks. I go I go over again and they're like, well, we got to start with a bigger piece of glass this time. Because the other class you got before doesn't actually reach a full 36 inches. So we got to start with a 48 and cut it down. That glass is uh, $40. And, and Paul, I mean, like the, the cha-ching, 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 it just kept racking up. Now, I'm not done yet. L- hear me out. This torturous, hellacious project that just took forever. I, I, I'm in the final stages. I've got it. I've got the wood stained. Now I'm went. Th- I went to Sherwin Williams, and I got the good stuff. I've got the uh, the polyurethane, the you know the 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 satin finish. Ooh. And you know how sometimes in life things can just go into slow motion, and you're you just. <laughs> Yeah, usually when something horrible is happening, right? I mean, well, well welcome to my life. You know, the last three years, it's like they've just crawled. I don't <laughs> listen for another news update in half an hour. I'm, 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 I've got the polyurethane in one hand, brush in the other, and I'm putting. You know, I've I've done the one side, waited 24 hours, flipped the door over, and I'm doing the other side. And, you know, and I'm putting on this nice, even coat. Paul, I don't know how you are with your strokes, but sure. my strokes have been perfected. You know, well, years I, of practice of stroking. I played it, you know, like uh, quite a bit on Q95 in the early 80s. So I've, I've laid down the trail for people like you. So I'm, 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 I'm stroking back and forth, you know, Daniel's son, you know, the whole thing with the paintbrush. And it, it's like in slow motion, I, I say to myself, Oh no. I think I just let up my grip a little bit on <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Paul, I dropped this twenty five dollar can. Like first of all, the can is the size of, of of Campbell's chicken soup, right? And it's like twenty five dollars. And I I I let I didn't even let go of it. I just released the tension in my wrist like by a millimeter for a microsecond and now it's all over the friggin' floor <laughs> polyurethane you can't get that up you have to burn your house down i mean you just can't the, try uh, telling that to the insurance company though so right now okay the door's done i've i hung it back up and right now in my basement like there's a giant stain on the concrete and there's a hole there was a big chuck hole on the concrete down there already well that hole it's now filled with a half inch of plastic polyurethane and i i don't know I'm did Paul. you or you maybe you could tell people that you were painting a hole on the floor of your basement to try to capture the the road runner finally <laughs> It, 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 um, yeah, it does kind of look like a portal, like a like you could pass through it. Like he's going to fall in finally if you would just paint the hole in the right spot. Oh, my God. I, I don't know. I, I don't, I've never. It's, it's like an abusive relationship. You know, my um, this old house and my whole, you know, Bob Vila career is is just. I don't know why I keep going back for more punishment, <laughs> but it's it's just it, every time I turn around, something is beating me, whipping me, just I underst- winning over me. I'm failing left and right. I understand the fix it yourself compulsion because I do have a little bit of that when it comes to like electronic things, especially like if something on one of the sites. Uh, fails. This happened about, oh, I think, about three or four weeks ago, where I, I 
screwed something up pretty uh, big time. And all of a sudden, if you went to ballpotique.com, you were presented with a, you know, a blank screen. And uh, it and it was my doing. It wasn't like I'd been infiltrated by by Russian hackers, which, by the way, I was one time. True story. Is that a true story. True story. <laughs> the, this, this happened about oh gosh, five, six, seven years ago. That that site was like loading really slowly, and just not responsive at all. And finally, take a look around in like the root files, and there are these scripts that are you know directing. I don't know how much of the traffic, but some of the traffic, you know, redirecting it to these, you know, .ru sites in Russia, where I assume, you know, they're making some money per, uh, you know, every time somebody landed on it, probably. And, uh, you know, then they were probably you know, trying to, you know, entice them to go somewhere else. So, you know, I, I take care of that uh, with a very complicated process of deleting you know, anything that had been recently installed and then changing the password. Never had another problem again. I don't know how you do it, man. I don't know how you, how you, all right, like, look, okay. I grew up with a Nintendo controller in my hand, right? When my, when my parents wanted something hooked up or my grandparents or whatever, you know, I would be hooking up their home theater systems for them. You know, I'm always, I've always had a cord or a cable in my hand, and I've always been, uh, you know, I learned how to use DOS when I was a kid. <laughs> and, you know, but for some reason, the C- Internet. CD you know, backslash. Exactly. Change directory. Blah, blah, blah. But for some reason, the Internet escapes me. <laughs> I, in, it, I, I like the fact that you are, when I, I'm not well, disparaging my father, but like when I look at my dad and he's like, sort of, you know, like, how do I get on this website? You know, like <laughs> Gmail. You know, how do I load this Gmail into my DOS? When I look at you, and I, I say, like, you know, in your demo, you're do, you know, you're like leaps and bounds ahead of, of you know, you know, of of people of your age, and then you're leaps and bounds ahead of me, which you shouldn't be. And <laughs> Damn you. And I, I, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I can't believe that you build all that yourself and it, you know, you continue to maintain it and, and, and handle things. And I don't know how you, how do you have time to do that? See, that's my problem. You know, I, uh, and I finally, uh, we're, we're just about to get an upgrade on weatherclaims.com, weather history research, which is my other business. I never talk about on the radio or online cause it's kind of a specialized thing. But if you're an insurance adjuster, you should know me, get to know me, or maybe an attorney sometimes, too, because we do weather, weather verification and investigation. It's pretty boring. I feel people stopping the MP3 right now, just as I'm starting to talk about it. But it's a pretty important thing around here in Paul Boutique country as far as diversification goes. So it has its own website, Weather Claims. Dot com and we sort of inherited the website when we bought the business and it needs it needs to be updated and brought into the Tom the mobile HTML5 compliant age so it's easier to see on mobile devices and such I am having that done by someone you'll be happy to know because I just you're right I just don't have the time and so I finally have uh, hooked up with someone in that regard does that make you feel better it does well and plus you know if you really want to sell that next time i mean it's oh it when you start talking about your lawyers and insurance salesmen you know i don't know this is just something sexier like you know i have a secret life <laughs> if you want to see what it's all about come on get on the internet come on over to weatherclaims.com baby well, it involves a lot of what Tom calls homework. Let's put it that way. It's a lot. It's lots and lots of research. It's what you know. It's essentially what your wife does a lot of times, which is uh, come over to my spare bedroom and work for a few hours. No, it, uh, it involves a lot of research and kind of going through a lot of data. I've been uh, watching. Uh, you know, as we approach the holiday season. Oh, Here we are, depending on when you're hearing this, we've already approached the, if you're hearing this through, you know, like a subscription on iTunes, you've already, Christmas has already passed because they had a little, they went on a hiatus and they're Apple, so they don't really care what the hell you think about that. So Merry Christmas. You can't upload a podcast for a week. 
<laughs> we, we've we waited weeks to do one. <laughs> the point where we're ready to do one, you can't upload one anyway. So those of you listening through the regular subscription, happy post-Christmas. But we're also going to put this up in other formats. You know, I haven't I didn't realize just how much of a bah humbug spirit I'd been in the last few years. <laughs> you know, I mean, not just in, you know, daily life, but also around Christmas time. You know, Christmas time, traditionally my favorite time of the year. Mm hmm. When you're a kid, I honestly, there's nothing better than that, that moment when you run downstairs. Mom and dad are there, you know, siblings are there, and there's your tree and all your, your presents. And, the, you know, it is a magical time. And it's good for a person like me who's not the, well, what did my boss say the other day? Oh, Let's see, he said you're an a-hole, but this is a Christmas episode. So this is something different, or this directly relates to the... No, he's just saying, you know, you're not very nice. You know. <laughs> well, you're not sometimes. You're not a very nice guy. And, well, sometimes that's a, I, I take that as a badge of honor. Sometimes that's not right. Well, lately, I've been, I find it easier to be nice and to be, whatever you want to say, happy, happier... Uh, because of, uh, you know, these little kids running around and mm -hmm. how, you know, like the, the, the time this time of year now has like a whole new meaning. And it, it's it's actually really great. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, I would say it's almost as fun, maybe because, you know, you get older and your memory of the first Christmases that you had is fading. So you need some new memories. I would say that it's it's really more fun, you know, to see it uh, through their eyes than yours. Paul, I like being older, and I like I like uh, growing up, but I just want to stop somewhere in the middle. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know if I want to see the whole thing through. You know, that's that, that's a that's a scary proposition. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's there really there's only two choices. That's the problem. You know, with the whole it would be fun to press pause every once in a while, but when you press pause. How do you know, you know, maybe you've stopped on Breakfast in America, but you don't know that the logical song or a Goodbye Stranger <laughs> is still around the corner. Does this really have to be about Steely Dan? <laughs> it's super, super tramp. tramp. I was, I I was too confused. <laughs> Steely Dan is the super tramp as Volcano was to Dante's Peak. You know. <laughs> Or Armageddon to Deep Impact. I mean, it's like, why we have two movies in the same summer about the same topic? They seem like the same band. They both start with an S. They both have really good production. They both have that great 70s kind of sound. I mean, <laughs> no one is saying that they want to pause their life right now. But seriously. <laughs> seriously. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a time when I, uh, you know, wanted... Uh, the trick is, you know, not to hit the pause button. You just need to hit the, I guess, the slow down button, <laughs> but not the reason because your glass is about to break or your poly is about to fall button. You want to just kind of slow down enough that you appreciate it, but you can't just, you know, you can't stop. I once read that, uh, you know, to, to to die is to live. If if you don't die, then you never really lived because dying is just as much part of life as as being born. So that's right. I mean, know. otherwise, why would you ever want to do anything? Why would you? You would always well. I'll do that tomorrow. You know, I'll do that some other time. I'm never going to die. Well, well, yeah, that's another. That's a good point. There's a knowing that there is an end gives you a sense of urgency to. To get out there and, 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 and partake of life. That's How long do you want to live? Do you want to be 100 years old? I mean, I see news stories. Me and Mrs. P are of one mind about this. I see news stories. Hey, good news. You'll get to, you know, it'll be easier to live to 100 or, or 105 and even 95. And we both are like, won't you be done by then? I mean, <laughs> won't you be ready, ready to roll? I have a, I have an answer. I do have an answer for this, and it's very serious. And I, I say no, this I'm being with all serious sincerity. too. Uh, I want to live one second before my wife dies, like because if she's gone, there's no reason to be around, and if she's going to go, 
let me go first. You know. Ah, but see, that's very, uh, you know, that's, I mean, I've had those thoughts too, but that's very, <laughs> it's very selfish. I want to die first. <laughs> You're stuck with, you know, dividing out the, uh, the money amongst the two cats and maybe the two kids. <laughs> Well, you know, they say that men uh, men keep their looks longer, but they die first. You're gonna die young. Well, that was the you know that was a great thing about uh, when my mom and dad died. They died almost I think it was exactly four weeks apart, and I mean that's one of those things that's great for them. <laughs> you know, way to go, mom and dad. It's horrible, <laughs> you know, for the uh, kids. I mean, it's it's a one two punch, you know, that doesn't stop. But the uh, the one mitigating factor is hello lawyers who've tuned in you know via any referrals from weatherclaims.com the mitigating factor would be that yeah you know that uh they had one one month they had to spend apart you know they were married for 60 plus years you could never imagine them you know they were one of these couples you couldn't imagine apart and luckily for them you know they didn't have they weren't for more than a couple of weeks you know there's a long period of my life where i thought that you know that that was dopey you know that being with being stuck with someone that long was 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 torturous but you know <laughs> well, you'll run out of things to talk about <laughs> you know as and and it's and it's not that like the, the alternative is bad you know living a life where you're constantly discovering new things or new people is also you know a complimentary lifestyle but there's <laughs> yeah but that's what your career is for at least for me hello <laughs> I'm, i've had to constantly discover new people <laughs> the the all, you know, I, I like i guess i won't i've had to live this way for a while now to sort of really you know appreciate what it what it means and to you know to have somebody that you know not only helps you but you know is there for you emotionally and whatnot? So, a helpmate, know. as the uh, as the phrase goes from the yeah. Good book, yeah, a helpmate. I mean, yo, yeah, I definitely know know what that means. This time of the season where we're thankful for those things around us, <laughs> as we gather together as a family. I do right. remember that my. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> it's so hazy and foggy to try to think back to those uh, Christmases of my youth. But uh, I remember, oh, you know, there was a guy, you know, every TV station, especially back then, not so much now, but especially back then they had, you know, local, you know, local kid shows. The Engineer John show, you know, on Channel 33, the uh, who I guess literally I think I've come to find out later on as an adult, he actually was an engineer. <laughs> At the television station, maybe it was all a big joke on us, but he would put on like a railroad engineer's outfit, which was, you know, obviously very cool. And, uh, and this guy's and, obviously a sex offender now, right? <laughs> and engineer John would show us, you know, some uh, some Gumby and Pokey <laughs> cartoons, and uh, and uh, and I think it was a Deputy Dog and Rough and Ready. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> and so you had uh, engineer John. And, of course, you know, Romper Room, which I think was on Channel 21. And then you had some other guy who I think was on f 15, maybe. But uh, he was Uncle Wynn, <laughs> Wynn Kohlinger, who had the Kohlinger Toy and Bike Company in Fort Wayne in the late 60s and uh, into the 70s. And he would buy, it was probably like, I suppose, like an infomercial now. But he would be on, you know, like for a half an hour. And I did, the whole show was just this, you know, a couple of black and white cameras. And this guy would demonstrate toys. Yeah. <laughs> but it would only come on around like Christmas time. And it was on like at six o'clock at night. It probably preempted the news because, you know, it was 1969, whatever. And uh, so I can still remember, you know, like a very Uncle Wynn uh, centric television lifestyle right before Christmas. <laughs> Being very excited about the many toys he would unveil. The toy trucks and the trains, the spirograph, you know, some of the newfangled toys, <laughs> spirograph, the view master, <laughs> oh. things like that. Nothing you would, you know, I, I don't know that I ever got as a child anything that required AC. <laughs> Maybe, well, I suppose when I started asking for like radios, you know, well, I, and a, a tape recorder, I did badger my mom and dad for a, a, a you know, like an open reel, reel to reel. Uh, tape recorder 
which is a, a pre prehistoric device for making MP3s for our younger podcast right. listeners. Take a minute and 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 really dig deep and think about you know. Let's go back to those childhood Christmases where there you know there's a young Paul in a you know in a log cabin. <laughs> <laughs> He's, you know, Dolly Parton used to talk about like, you know, her, <laughs> my her, Tennessee her, Mountain her, home. Her her favorite Christmas is with her family, and, and she get a bag of oranges. <laughs> you know, we used to. Do you do other families do that? Or we, I mean, we would get oranges like in our stockings, and I think that has some kind of, uh, you know, probably I'm sure it has some kind of roots in the Depression, as you know, many things involving my mom and dad did. Uh, yeah, no, I would get like uh, like. The plastic clear candy canes that had like M and M's in them, you know, my mom would put those. In That's the, fun. Stuff. Um, but uh, like, what, Paul? If you can narrow it down, is, is there a, a, a particular Christmas that you carried through your childhood and teen years and your early adult years that you look back as like the best Christmas present or the best Christmas moment that you've had? I, you know, sadly, they, you know, they're all kind of, uh, I suppose, compressed together, although I do, I know this is pathetic, but I do remember getting the real, <laughs> the real, the real thing. And unfortunately, none of those tapes were preserved by anybody because you could hear me now reading the Huntington Herald Press out loud, you know, on them uh, doing my, my newscast for 10 minutes. Uh, and then I also remember... Like, uh, I know, again, this is sort of trite and it's probably not going to surprise you, but I do remember, you know, like electronic stuff when they got me, you know, first it was like some, I remember being very excited about getting a, uh, a, ra- <laughs> a radio that didn't have, you know, like an analog face that had the little flip numbers on it that would, uh, and it wasn't. It wasn't strictly digital. It wasn't an LED display. It had the the numbers that would flip, like go from 25 to 26. The little thing would fall over. Like an old clock? No, it it would look like a digital display, but the it wasn't an LED. It was, you know, like uh, 325. And then when it got to be about 326, the thing would the 25 would flip. And then it would say 26, you know, one, the 25 little card, whatever, would flip down and then it would say 326. This was the height of my high tech in the early 70s. <laughs> and you were excited about this? Anything, you know, uh, uh, anything having to do <laughs> with the radio would do it. And then, then later on, I got like a big, uh, you know, kind of like a stereo for my bedroom. And, uh, you know, from then. Yeah. You know, all, you start bringing the chicks in there. <laughs> that's right. And we put on a little fog hat and you know what happens. A little <laughs> slow a little ride, Steely Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah a Steely Dan, Super Tramp. Hey, I, I, I think I can get my dad's multivitamins after he goes to sleep. <laughs> my mom and dad. I don't know if they were into the multivitamins like that in the seventies when I was growing up, but I know that they were they were into that big time. You know, like once I think once he retired and had time to to uh, become you know the, the household's medical uh, correspondent uh, then the, i think they got more into that or maybe they just decided if they were older they needed all the help they could get i don't know but they were into the whole multivitamin thing i think once you i think once you reach a certain age like you f- you fiddle with so many pills every day that you feel like you know you are some kind of expert. What are, you know, what's another couple of pills? I mean, that's probably what they, well, they were blessed in that department. I mean, they never really um, had any, linger, you know, chronic uh, stuff. So, you know, they weren't, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, some some people, you know, past 50, 60, whatever they are, they're carrying a CVS around in the in the bathroom. Well, I was reading this study that said that these multivitamins don't even work and that, you know, the, the average American diet is like full of vitamins and minerals. There's, you know, unless you're malnourished or, you know, unless Ariel Castro is keeping you in his basement in Cleveland, you know, for 10 years or whatever, you, you should be perfectly fine. And they basically do nothing except maybe harm your kidneys. <laughs> oh, no. Now, what is it in them that's harming your kidneys? I don't know. I, I didn't read the, the whole thing because I'm not interested in actual information. I just like to skim headlines and cause panic. <laughs> It's kind of my job. Weather and traffic on the fives. <laughs> so anyway, I guess 6,000 people took the lookalike placebo pill or the Centrum multivitamin. And basically, there's just no, nothing. It's a 30-year study. Like, no, there's no significant uh, 
good effects if from you're eating stuff. you know a halfway decent diet right yeah if you're eating anything i mean you know think about a, a hunk of meat how much protein and you know, vitamin whatever is in in just a hunk of a flesh so there's no reason that anyone even would even really need these things but you know i mean think about like gnc's like build an entire multi-billion dollar business on this idea of like, oh and who's you know, yeah i mean who was mr uh what do you call that stuff creatine Creatine. Creatine, Cre- creatine right. right. Who was Mr. Yeah. Creatine for a while? L- yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Davis the Thirdus. Uh, well, that'd be, yeah, exactly. Atlas Thirdus is what I like to be. <laughs> and now you're sturdy without it. <laughs> I mean, it, in, in creatine is like, I don't know, it's almost for looks as much as anything else. It just puts a bunch of more water into your, you get like a b- bit more water weight. You look fuller. You look thicker. You know, so you think you're looking for Paul. So that and uh, some baby oil before a weekend tournament, you were good to go. Right. I mean, it, it's 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 ridiculous that you're I don't know. My, my father swears by these multivitamins. And he, he tries to get me to take them, too. And he's like, oh, I feel so much better. And maybe he does. But well, that could be a placebo a placebo effect. Sorry. No. Oh, speaking of placebos and, and, and vitamins and minerals and poison you know i've, I've made a deal with my wife <laughs> okay that was my second choice devil was number one <laughs> if i may be richard okay, dawson I, all right i've made a deal with hell's vice president <laughs> bing, 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 bing. so uh i've kind of been pestering her a little bit back and forth about uh, possibly you know one of these days you know returning to the world of uh, two-wheeled transportation oh the uh, motorcycle that you had to sell to burn in the furnace to to stay warm <laughs> one winter wasn't that right that's right you know uh, let's see i got rid of the, my motorcycle uh you know uh, a year before Elizabeth was actually born, you know, and she's four years old now. So we're going on five years without a bike. Is that you know, why she's asking uh, fake Santa earlier for a dirt bike? You know, I think it is actually. I mean, I, I've, I've been leaving these books around, you know, trying to give my wife a hint. You know, what are you, I've, that kid in a toy story? Kind of. Or Christmas I mean, story, sorry. I work in radio. She's a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a kid-parent relationship. And I want a... <laughs> Here, I've got a, one from a magazine that I've ripped out for you. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm like, Mom, I mean, come on. My, my allowance is you know, $50 a week. <laughs> you know, if I save up that much. But, like, I, I said to her, you know, I, I, I like this bike, and, you know, maybe, you know, if I do my chores. And, you know, <laughs> and he always up. talks like Mel Tillis when he asks for something from his wife. So, I, I put it to her one way. She's like, yeah, I don't know if we really need that right now. And I'm like, what about this, though? You know, if, if, if we do it this way, it's basically money-wise – about the same as I'm paying for Red Bull per month. <laughs> so you're Which, going to trade Red Bull for, speaking of, of stimulants of questionable validity, you're going to trade Red Bull for two wheels. That's correct. And I had, we made the deal Thursday, four days ago, and I've had until tomorrow to wean myself off so you know then i've you know every day since then i've, I've had to work early so it's you know I, it's and that's when the red bull's so crucial it's four o'clock in the morning you're driving <laughs> to cincinnati you're just like oh all i gotta do is just pull over here to my drug dealer and get my crack it really you know, it's perfect it isn't just the drinking it's the whole ritual isn't it tom oh it is paul it is it's all <laughs> mental it's not the chemical but then again I will say this for Red Bull. Here's the difference between here's me on Red Bull, me not on Red Bull. Not on Red Bull. First report, 5 a.m. I'm asleep on the air. And then 5.30, slowly waking up. 6 o'clock, I'm starting to roll around. By 7, we're in the groove. You know? <laughs> Let me just allow you know the, uh, the, uh, the 1975 analog clock watching in my bedroom pulp boutique you know radio geek from the past just to say you're on in 30 some states on the night pattern and you're not excited jeez <laughs> <Yes. I'm, laughs> and then let me remind myself that it's 2013 okay it's past. so 
Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but for a moment, it still triggers something in me that you're blasé about being on WLW. So, but then it goes uh, away. But when I'm on, on, I'm on Red Bull. You know, when you're on fifty thousand watts of Red Bull, well, hot damn, that's a different story. I, uh, it's just like you know, uh, the first one. It's like I'm shot out of a friggin' cannon. The first report. Good is, morning. Is just, <laughs> the first report's actually snappier than the last one. I'm the, the news bozo. Truck <laughs> <laughs> a bozo. Like so, yeah. I, I don't know I, I, that. I'm going to miss. I and you know, like I went from okay. I went from drinking originally the eight ounces, one a day, and then from that to 12, from that to 16, from that to 20. And then, like, I do the 20 ounces in the morning, and then I'd supplement the eight ounces, you know, on a good day around uh, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. And then uh, after that, it would go, if it was a worse type of day, you know, it'd be the 20 in the morning and then the 12, you know, <laughs> around eh, 10, 11. It's like your 2020 news. <laughs> You do 2020, 2020 sports. 2020, well, right. Well, it used to be 2020 news on back in the day. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, anyhow, it's, it's, it's getting out of, it's out of control. Let, it is out of control. Let me make a confession uh, about uh, my addiction. Go ahead. Uh, people say that, well, I don't really like the taste of coffee. I, you know, uh, I get the, uh, the, the jolt from it too. And the, let me make the connection to Red Bull in in confessing this. I, you know, I've had the Red Bull before, as you know, from time to time, but I never really completely went over the moon with it because I don't really like the taste of it at the end of the day. So I think that if I told people, which I I don't because I think it's a lie, if I told people I don't really like the taste of coffee, you know, I'm just drinking it to, to get high or whatever, I think that would be wrong. I think I have to, you know, be up front with people and let them know, I think I like the taste of coffee. Well, it's interesting because you actually started me on the Red Bull. I know. You know I as, mean, as, you as I see, texted you one morning, you know, parents who use drugs have kids who use drugs. <laughs> I mean, it, it really was, you know, just an easy... You know, it's it's four thirty in the morning. I'm I'm dressed like I'm going to prom, and I'm standing around <laughs> waiting to go on the air to talk about car wrecks in the middle of the night. All right? <laughs> yes, you know, it's an so, unlikely spot to find yourself in. That's correct, and you know, you don't talk to anybody. Well, you don't in, talk to anybody in before the weather and the traffic on the sixes thing. When we were on like every five minutes, it was you. And then me, and then 20 minutes of standing there. And then you, and then me, and then 20 minutes of standing there. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm bored. So whether it was the iPod or, you know, we start sipping on this Red Bull, and all of a sudden, whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> <laughs> I am not falling back asleep. In fact, I am coming up with amazing ideas. <laughs> so maybe if I hadn't uh, introduced you to the bull, maybe you never would have, you know, dreamt up some off the cuffs. Well, in you know, you mentioned taste. I love the taste of sugar-free Red Bull. I love it when you crack the can, and you know, I don't know if that's pineapple, whatever. There's, you know, they've got the scent. What I don't know what it is, but I mean, it just smells like candy. And it, uh, I can you know, I can hear it, I can feel it, I can smell it, I can taste it. You know, I I wonder if there's somewhere in the world where they give you like a Red Bull bath, you know, <laughs> where you can just slide in and just sit there for an hour, you know, and just like soak it into like your DNA. And, you, know, you could like run through doors and stuff. It's in uh, Torine, Italy. It's part. It's in the Mediterranean. So anyway, after being prompted at work a few times, people are asking me, please stop drinking this because, you know, you are a psycho. Is this a, we're back to WLW, right? That's right. Okay. You know, and the guys are saying, you know, they're printing out reports about how it's like the same ingredients that the Army used in Vietnam. And they decided that they would they'd outlaw it in the States. But <laughs> since it's made overseas, you can still do it. But it's Agent Pineapple instead of Agent <laughs> Arlo Orange. I actually got a pineapple in my uh, stocking one year. It's the craziest thing. <laughs> what a tie-in. So I, I, I've, I found the motivation. Because without it, I mean, why, why? Why stop? You know, I mean, it's either 
get up in the middle of the night and, and try to be awake, you know, or or not have to try and just get up and, you know, and get on with your life. You know, but it, it just so happens it costs three, four, five, nine thousand dollars a day. You know. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, too, quite frankly. It's not just that I wasn't head over heels about the taste. You know me. Your cheap meteorologist, you know, is not going to live a constant life of, of paying a dollar, whatever it is, 50 at the Steak and Shake window just for a little Red Bull. Oh, my God. If only. I mean, that little thing right that you're talking about, that's 229 at the cheapest you can find it. And you're talking about, uh, geez, you know, $4 for the 16, you know, and five something for the 20 ounce. Woo! Oh, Paul, it's it's worse than Taurine, <laughs> Taurine's done better than gold the last year. I mean, it's you want to talk about printing money. Those people are printing money. I thought about somehow getting a Red Bull vending machine for my, uh, you know, right out here on Main Street, right, you know, in front of my house. And, you know, that way I could, like, be skimming off the back end while I'm, you know, I'd have somebody else out there feeding the money in the machine, feeding my habit. <laughs> Helping out with cash flow, sure. Yeah. And I thought, mm, why not? But then I thought, you know, do I really want to continue to, like, you know, free base this stuff? <laughs> So where are you now here as we uh, as we sit recording those days before Christmas? Are you off the bull? Well, uh, completely. Tomorrow, no, tomorrow is my final day, my final authorized day for Red Bull for a life on the bull. And uh, today I should have done the eight ounce, but it was uh, kind of a rough morning. <laughs> Couldn't find my pants. <sighs> I do let my mood dictate what I what I drink, you know, too much these days. You know, if it's a bad morning, then it's a Red Bull to the rescue. I do radio without pants. I think there's no reason that, uh, that you can't, too. But I guess you've got the rules well, and conventions of society to think of. Well, I don't know. I mean, I have pants and I have plenty of pants laying around, but I don't have the pants that I'm looking for. <laughs> you know, of course, there's... I, Look, I, I can't stand the fact that there are people out there on this earth who wear pants once and throw them in the laundry. You know, pants have a life, a shelf life. You can wear, you know. You, once I am, with, I am dryer, with you on this. Absolutely. Once they're out of the dryer, they're stiff. You know, and then it's not until they're a wrinkled, limp mess that you finally give in and throw them down the laundry chute, you know. So these pants had a good two, three, four days left in them. I mean, these were just washed. Wore them one time to a Christmas party, you know, once for a second and, you know, and, and, and put them up on the shelf above the toilet, which is like my no-no shelf. <laughs> whoa, 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 Your no-no shelf. <laughs> yeah. Stop. I mean, I Hammer time. <laughs> Tell me about your no-no shelf. Well, I put all my no-nos up there. <laughs> Because you know, I, I I live in a house with uh with, with these little kids, and you know they there's a lot of no nos, Paul. There's there's safety no nos, and there's content no nos. I mean, there's a lot of things up there on that shelf that little fingers and little eyeballs don't uh, need to be digging into. Oh, uh, okay. And does Tammy not, have things? Like does, no no shelf. Does, does Tammy have things on the no no shelf too? Or is it just you? Well, you know, it's funny because. I find myself, you know, I've had to, you know, I've had to curb the cussing. I've had to, you know, I've had to do all these. I've had to adjust myself huh? in like so many different ways, depending on the pants. And, you know, <laughs> how stiff that, they are. You've, you're, you're now, you're, you're performing for a whole new audience, but <laughs> they just happen to be these tiny little people. So you, you realize that everything that you say to them is something that you're introducing to them for the first time in their life. That could stick and with them forever. That's correct. So I've had to be extra careful about the things I say and the things I do. And, and thus, that's had a, a significant impact on my already tiny vocabulary. So there'll be moments 
at uh, at work where you know well, I might be in the newsroom with you know, a bunch of old gristled disgruntled broadcasters that have you know somehow survived for 20 plus years <laughs> at Clear Channel it's unthinkable honestly <laughs> even through christmas little tommy and i will just i'll just you know think to myself and then say out loud i got a pee pee <laughs> you know so, I mean, I have been uh, referencing urinating as PP now for, for, for a good six months. And, well, actually, and it, you know, for those of us who, you know, are on terrestrial radio or who still want to speak on a podcast like this, you know, as if it were, you know, theoretically terrestrial radio, you know, fudge comes in handy as a <laughs> as the F word, you know, substitute. Ah, fudge. Back to on the back door again, I see. <laughs> no. You can't seem to get that thing in there. Pee pee. Don't drop it. So I've had, you know, I, my vocabulary is sort of, you know, I'm, I'm like talking about, I find myself talking less and less about sex and more and more about Dora the Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, in, the thing is, like, normally I would be, I'd stew about it, and I'd, and I'd be worked up about it, and I'd be resentful about it. But it's funny, like, I don't know what it is, but like when it's it's the kids, and and it's it's this fatherhood thing. Like, I I just chalk it up to change and just just roll with it. Just like a, it, it's like this, Paul. Parenthood to me is like being a child. You're rolling down the same hill, except like you've been around, you've been rolling longer. So you have to like, when you're, when you've done a complete roll and you're like in that, that, in that slow motion moment where like your head is up and you can see around you, you have to, you have to look out for them and make sure they're not rolling into like a pit or something. You know? <laughs> or into glass if it's your house. I mean, you want to, you want to make sure that, you know, it, it's, you're all on the same little journey. And it's and it's just happening so fast, and you're just sort of like I I don't really know how to stop, and I don't want to stop because I'll be left behind. But and I don't want to like speed up either. There's it's not a race, you know. But I just we've got to somehow not necessarily end, but continue safely. I heard some you know in in passing by a uh, perhaps a Clear Channel uh, station the other day. Merry Christmas. Uh, I heard uh, somebody, I think they were filling in for Limbaugh, maybe, you know, like everybody in the world is on vacation right now. Hello, Dave Smiley. Two and a half weeks or however long, you know, we're on hiatus. But this guy who was filling in made a really excellent point about uh, political fortunes and, and, and who's up and who's down. And the uh, I guess it just goes to the, you know, the continuing uh, folly and the and the uh, Oh, the arrogance of man. And the, and everyone has a tendency to see the world just, you know, revolving around them. As you're about to discover when that girl gets to be about 12 or 13. But anyway, everybody has that, you know, that certain tendency. And that he was his point was that a political party may think, OK, you know, we've got let's just say theoretically one political party about 10 years ago was you know saying they're going to have a you know they were going to have a republican you know majority forever now you got the other party saying we're going to have a majority forever and his uh, counter argument was that events happen nobody ever thinks about that everybody thinks that once they've you know they've arranged their corner of the world their corner of their work their corner of politics the way they want it it's the continuing folly of man and it always will be to think that it's going to stay like that forever nobody that uh that rock is not going to come off the side of the cliff you know and smack wily coyote in the head you know before the roadrunner gets to the polyurethane hole that you've painted on your basement floor nothing is ever going to happen that that hasn't been planned and if i've learned anything you know over the last 51 years it's that Things happen all the time at a crazy speed, unfortunately, and you never know. You never know what's coming. So you're right. You have to just kind of at some point uh, sit back and enjoy the ride. That's deep. (laughs) Thank you. Good night, everybody. Man, I could use a cup of coffee. You've been taking your multivitamin. (laughs) That's right. It's it's amazing how smart I got once I got off the taurine. Follow.
follow Paul and Tom on Facebook and Twitter. And listen to the archives at paulandtomshow.com. Subscribe through iTunes or listen on your smartphone with the Stitcher Radio app. Thanks for listening to The Paul and Tom Show.